Hi folks, and welcome back to Fishing with Den. Well, this is the second part of my um, series on making loaded bodied waggler floats, and this is the point we got to when we left off in part one. Now, I will be taking you through the final parts of making these floats next, but the thing is, I've actually taken the time to prepare the other 14 floats just to save some time. As you can see, these ones have already had the first coat of black paint, and I've also ground down the, the lead weights, which are going to be fitted onto the bottom of them. And the reason I've put this first coat of paint on is to give them a certain amount of waterproofing, because we're going to be dunking them into this tube here um, to, to actually do the, the loading. And to help me do that, I've got one of these waggler adapters with the swivel on the bottom and a small length of line. And what I'll do is I'll thread on the weight and also one AA shot or AAA shot and that will hopefully take the thing down to about there and at that I'll be happy. So I suppose the next thing we've got to do then is to get on and uh, start showing you how this process actually works starting with the painting. For anyone who watches my videos on a regular basis um, I've started to use this spray paint instead of the, the paint brushes uh, this one is a primer and a paint, as you can see, and it's also good for wood, metal and plastic. And I have used it on some of the uh, reed wagglers. Uh, I've had those for a few months now and it still seems to be performing really well. I find I use this because it's, it's easy and quick. The only thing is, make sure, because of the spray, that you wear one of these masks, because the overspray does tend to go everywhere. And also make sure you're in a really well ventilated room I'm in the garage with both doors open and I should probably ha actually have a fan blowing that way because this really does um, get an aerosol out into the room. So be very very careful when you're using this kind of thing folks. So as I said, this is only the first coat. Um, it's just there to seal the, the, the wood up, make sure it doesn't take on water while I'm trying to make out the shot loadings. Take a piece of bamboo, stick it in the end there. That simulates a, a tip, but it also means that um, if you do go over the top, it's not going to get water inside here. The way I do this is simply to hold the stick. I'm no expert in this, as you can probably tell, but there we go. Make sure you've got a layer on everywhere. Just a bit at the bottom. And there we go. I've made this board with holes in it and just leave it like that to set or to dry rather. And now for the loading for the float. Now to make it easier so you can see it I've got one of these uh, larger wagglers. This is the 7 gram waggler and this is a 7 gram weight. So technically if I put that on there this would sink. So to that end I need to grind it down a little. Now, I'm going to do it on my belt sander over here but you can certainly Put that in a vise or a set of grips and just keep filing down until you get to the requisite point. Stop frequently. If you overdo it, you can't put the metal back in. Um, so underdo it and gradually work your way down. find when you do that you end up blocking the hole off so I just take a, a drill which is slightly drill bit which is slightly smaller than the hole and that's it cleans it out quite neatly you could also use a pin or a needle to do the same job so to test the loading then as I mentioned before I put this float adapter onto the base I've threaded on the uh, the weight that I've just uh, ground down and I've put an AA shot on. The idea is that I want it to come to somewhere about here and I'll be happy enough with that. Obviously, as we said before, to prevent water going in there, I've just put a piece of stick in the top. And that wasn't just pure luck, folks, it's because I've done a few before. But that's about right. That'll give me just over an AA shot's worth of loading after the, uh, the main weight is on the, the float. Before I attach the weights to the bottom, let me just show you what we've got here. 
The one on this side is the finished float from the set I made a, a couple of weeks ago and this is one of the ones from today. So I'm going to cut off the tip section here so it's the same length as this one. And the reason I left it as long as that when I did the, uh, the shotting was to simulate when it has its own insert on the top which could have been something like that or indeed something like those. Now what I'm going to do is cut them off the first three, the three, four and five grams, so they're going to be cut off at six centimetres and the bigger ones here are going to be cut off at seven centimetres. Purely arbitrary, just seemed about right to me and it does seem to work. I've tried these a, a two or three times now and I've also tried them in quite windy conditions when you wanted a longer float and they do seem to cope with everything I need them to cope with. To cut them off Hold it against the board, six centimetres, put a mark on, and then just use one of these to cut them off. Just take care not to cut yourself and you'll be fine. There we go. To fit the lead weights, I'm going to show you on one of these larger floats so it's easier to see. Put it into a pair of grips or you can put it into a vise. Take a 2.5 millimeter drill bit. These holes are probably already about two millimeters but a word of warning have this on a very low setting. These things I've found if they melt the, the lead they tend to grip and they can actually break the, uh, the drill and you can also get the drill stuck in there. So nice and gentle and slowly just follow the hole down. There we go. Withdraw occasionally just to get rid of any waste and probably go in probably about just over halfway. Let me just check that. There's the drill. Yeah, so maybe a fraction more for this one. Do a bit of a clean out. Just push in and out. that's it. Now you may find when you come to do this that the base area here doesn't quite fit. Let's just try it. Yeah too tight a fit. So what we're going to have to do is just take a piece of sandpaper and just sand this down a bit. It's mostly just getting the the paint off but just take it gently as I said before stop frequently and just check it because you can't put any of the material back in the base you can only take more off okay that seems about right now but this is now too long to um, go right the way in here so I'll take a little piece off let's put it on the bench twist little bit of sanding just to make sure we've got no burrs on the end. We need to get into there a bit. Try that. There we go. Still a bit tight and I think it may be something to do with the... There we go. And there we go. It's a fairly tight fit but as I say don't overstrain it you don't want to be breaking that to bamboo but get that right up into the body of the float there and that's the loading on. We will be gluing that in a moment but I've got to do the rest of these first. But before I do that I'm now going to show you one of the really small ones. So these are the four gram weights and they are a bit fiddly I'm afraid. So again because they're shorter as well, you're going to need to go further down. So put it in the hole, nice and gentle, work your way down. It does tend to follow the hole so it's not really a problem for going off, off centre like you did with the float body potentially. 
Don't go all the way through. Pop to there. A quick look. Well, that's most of the way through. Not the end of the world. Again, we'll do the sanding, but we need to cut this um, base area down quite substantially on this one. So I'll do that now. Uh, and if you look at this one, you can see how that's quite a lot shorter than previously, because obviously this is two. But if I put this on, that's it, sitting neatly up to the body. Well, it's taken me about half an hour to do all 15 of those floats, um, but they're done now, so it's time to do a bit of gluing. Word of warning, this is the five minute uh, Araldite, the epoxy, and um, I'm going to do this in stages, probably no more than three to five at a time, purely because um, the, the thing starts to go off after two or three minutes, and then it just gets difficult. So just do little batches at a time and you'll be fine. I'm going to start with the smaller floats. These are obviously the more fiddly ones. Just dip the base in, get a reasonable coating on it, push on, and just I'm going to use my finger just to smear around it and then just do that. And I'm going to need this to put them in while I do it. Just one quick word of advice when you're doing this. When you're putting the, the glue on and fitting these, as I said, just wipe around them. But once you've done that, just give them a twirl to make sure they're dead straight. Sometimes you can um, go slightly off centre when you're doing these things. And so it's just worth checking to make sure that you are straight with the thing. If you're not, just twist them both around a little bit and you'll probably find a point where it is totally straight. That's the glue dry then, and we're now at the point where we can start to fit rings on the base of them. I use these hooks as my rings, and basically all I do is cut them off. So they've just got the straight piece, and then the little bait holder barbs on the back are going to help to hold it inside the float. It's easy to do. There's the hook. Pair of cutters. Cut somewhere along the shank, cover it up like that, you want to make sure you don't have these things flashing around anywhere, squeeze and that retains both pieces on the table. You can dispose of the hook part later but you've now got the nice little element we're going to put inside the floats. Now I haven't cut them down yet to the size I want, they're just cut to a, a more or less size. Um, before you can get them in, obviously you saw me Araldite all of these um, things on and you'll know that quite a few of them went a lot of the way down the actual barrel um, And obviously that means you've only got a tiny little amount left So what we're going to do is we're going to drill a hole Inside there to accommodate the bait holder hooks and then we're just going to glue them in place Once again, I'm going to use one of these larger floats to make it easy for you to see what I'm doing But all I've done is I've put a, a one millimeter drill bit into my uh, cordless drill and I've put some tape around it because the, the chuck doesn't actually accommodate a one millimetre drill. So I do have a few issues with this thing slipping in and out. Put the drill into the base of the, the float and then drill the hole as required. Okay. Take one of the hooks Insert it in the base and see how far in it goes. Sometimes it can be a bit fiddly. Now that's actually not quite all the way in, but I don't really want to go any further with the drill. So what I'm going to do is just cut off a small amount of this. There we go. Now when I insert it, you want it to actually fit so it fits neatly into the um, the barrel there. Hopefully you can see that okay. And we'll put that on one side, ready for glue up. And of course, as usual, I've got to do the other 13 or 14 now. So, back in a minute. So gluing up then, take the 
ring. I just put the circle part of it into the grips, wave it around in the glue and just insert in the base. Get plenty of glue on it. You don't want these things coming out and just insert. Any excess just wipe off with a finger and that's that. And just move along until you've completed the set. So with the glue dried then, that's pretty much it for construction folks. Um, before you finish off, uh, just check through the eyes to make sure you haven't got glue in like I did with this one. Just clean that out with a, a needle or something. Make sure they're all clear. Oops. The other thing I would do is take some 600 grit um, wet and dry and just rub down the body as you can see here. Don't go too far, just go until uh, you've got a sort of a dullness that's coming through from underneath. What that does, it gets rid of any um, hairs which are sticking up uh, and also uh, remember when we did the initial shaping um, we used the, the, the coarse sandpaper. By just filing down at this point it really does just get rid of those little imperfections. The only thing we've got to do next is to put some more coats of paint on. I'm going to put two coats on it and then I'm going to finish it with a coat of varnish. But before I put the coat of varnish on, as you probably saw from these floats, I'm going to mark up the weights of the floats on each of them. So it'll be three, four, five, seven and nine grams, but it'll also show you the AA ratings as well, the equivalents. You don't have to do that. I do it because I want to um, and as I say once we've done all this bit we'll just finalize the, um, the tutorial with a quick session on the tips and we'll do that immediately after I've got these painted up. 